exciting technological developments and breakthrough in medicine, we are living longer than ever. At the same time, we are experiencing a massive growth of chronic disorders, such as cancer, cardiovascular, neurological, and metabolic diseases. With a rapidly aging population, this problem is getting worse. It's driving the healthcare costs through the roof, and we are not necessarily getting healthier. So why is this happening? A large part of the problem is our daily poor dietary choices. You have heard so many times to eat more fruits and vegetables, but how many times did you actually follow this advice? I, myself, started a healthy diet a million times, and I always found that the second day is the easiest. Guess why? Because by then, I had already given up. According to the latest evidence, however, there is a clear indication that unhealthy diets are responsible for one in five deaths globally. That is about 11 million lives. And arguably, unhealthy diet now kill more than cigarettes. Interestingly, it has been shown that it is not necessarily junk food that we eat that is killing us, but it's lack of healthy foods, such as vegetables, fruits, legumes, and nuts in our modern diet. So let's take cancer as an example. And unfortunately, with the way things are, about half of us are expected to have cancer at some point in our lifetime. But the good news is that about half of these cancers can be prevented by smart dietary and lifestyle choices. And nutrition science has made an excellent progress in understanding six major nutrient categories on our health and disease, including proteins, fats, carbohydrates, minerals, water. However, there is a growing evidence that there are a lot of other molecules in our foods that may help to fight diseases. In, plant, in plants, these molecules are responsible for flavor, odor, and color. So, for example, bitter taste of broccoli, or unpleasant smell of garlic, or dark hue of blueberries. The thing is that our diets are very complex. We swallow thousands of molecules, and these molecules interact with the biological processes encoding in our genome and with billions to trillions of microbes living in our guts. The number of interaction is massive, and you got the system ferociously difficult to analyze. Classical experimental methods have largely taken a reductionist view by studying one molecule or one food at a time. If you consider even a simple system, such as studying three molecules out of 10,000 molecules, this will lead to about one trillion possibilities. Using these experimental methods alone to explore this number of combinations would be like taking a bike to explore the galaxy. We will never get there. Recent breakthrough, however, in high throughput molecular technologies such as genomics, the study of genes, metabolomics, the study of metabolites, and proteomics, the study of proteins, have resulted in accumulation of very large data sets on drugs, foods, and diseases. It is, however, beyond any human capacity to get insights from this vast amount of data. We, therefore, have been developing next-generation machine learning, artificial intelligence, and supercomputing technologies to get actionable insights from this vast amount of data, such as, for example, to discover drug-like molecules in food to prevent or fight disease phenotypes. Our ultimate aim is to create AI-driven precision nutrition as a method for cancer prevention. We want to create tasty, cancer-beating hyperfoods. The Hyperfoods project is an alliance 
of, or rather fusion, I would say, of multiple disciplines. As part of our team, we have computer scientists, physicists, nutrition scientists, cancer researchers, clinicians, analytical chemists, and even molecular gastronomy chef Joseph Yusef, who worked in food temples such as Fat Duck. We want to combine this ex expertise to provide a quantum leap in the way we design and tailor next generation nutrition strategies to prevent the development of complex diseases such as cancer. With the team in place, the next challenge we face is the need of huge computing power to get this, to put these large molecular data sets into use. You may have heard of the Moore's law, which says that computing power doubles every two years. And now the smartphone in your pocket is actually more powerful than NASA computers that put a man on the moon. And what happens with this computing power when you are asleep or like this lady not checking social media status on the mobile phone? It, it is wasted. It sits idle. So what if we could combine the processing power of thousands of smartphones to create a virtual supercomputer that would help us to crunch complex data? This is exactly what we did. We deployed machine learning technologies into an app that allows you to donate the processing power of your smartphone in the fight against cancer. And to our surprise, we have had tens of thousands of people teamed up with us, whom we call now citizen sciences, to help to crunch data. And with their help, we were able to discover uh, drug-like molecules in foods that help us to fight diseases. These calculations would have taken us decades to complete on desktop PCs, but we were completed within the matter of a couple of months on this people-powered mobile supercomputing platform. So, allow me to pass the stage to Michael, who is going to show you some of these exciting uh, discoveries. Thank you. Thank you, Kirill. So, besides the computational complexity Kirill has mentioned that we had to face, another challenge we faced was also the complexity of the data itself. You know that human biology is governed by an intricate network of molecular interactions we call the interactome. We have about 20,000 different proteins encoded in our genome and many millions of interactions between them. And this is just a tiny piece of the picture because there are many other molecules that together form a very complex network. Drugs interact with this network by binding to their protein targets. And due to the network effect, this disrupts or activates multiple processes that happen in our cell. So you can think of pieces of domino that fall one after another when you touch one of them. The traditional approach or mindset of drug therapy is one disease, one drug, one target. But complex diseases such as cancer sabotage and disrupt entire networks of proteins and genes that interact. And the complexity of their interaction is too large to be modeled by hand. We could try to employ machine learning techniques to infer it from the data. The problem is that traditional machine learning techniques work well with images or audio, but they are not designed to deal with network structure data, such as the biological networks, the interactome. In order to address this challenge, we've developed a new framework that we call network-based machine learning or geometric deep learning. It allowed us to learn the network effects of clinically approved drugs and to predict anti-cancer drug-like properties of other molecules, for example, molecules contained in food. 
And we do it from the way they interact with the biological interactome network. So we apply this model to hunt for anti-cancer molecules contained in food. And as QL has mentioned, food has many components from multiple chemical classes that are used in medicine. Our model was fed with thousands of food-based molecules, and it discovered about 100 anti-cancer drug-like candidates, such as flavonoids, the family of compounds found in fruits and vegetables that give them their characteristic color. A traditional cancer researcher would at this point need to experimentally confirm the potency of each such molecule, a process that will easily take years or maybe a decade. Instead, we tailored natural language processing techniques to extract experimental data from the trove of human and animal studies in the medical literature in order to confirm our anti-cancer candidates. I don't know if you are aware, but the amount of scientific literature on cancer is absolutely humongous. Just to give you an idea of this scale, since the beginning of this talk, there are likely two new papers on cancer that have been published. So we're talking about amounts of information and data that are absolutely impossible to be processed by a human. That's why we need machine learning. We then use these components to construct what we call food map, representing ingredients that contain uh, large amounts and varieties of different anti-cancer molecules. And we've seen there, there are some champions or superheroes that we call hyperfoods in this map. We found, for example, that common and I would even say boring foods, such as cabbage, contain many anti-cancer drug-like molecules. So when I've seen this, I had the urge to run to the kitchen and make myself a cabbage smoothie. <laughs> I don't know, have you ever tried it? Have you, do you know how it tastes? So if you haven't, you probably don't want to know. So the crucial step in the design and preparation of hyperfood recipes is how to put all these potentially cancer-preventing or cancer-beating ingredients together into recipes and dishes that taste and look great. And this is where we needed help from our chef. Based on the ingredients we identified, Joseph designed our first hyperfood recipe. Kimchi, a traditional Korean dish made of fermented vegetables. Our hyper kimchi had a smashing success at the Imperial College Science Festival that was held in London earlier this summer. However, as some of you may know, I've lived in Switzerland for many years, probably enough time to learn the local tastes, and I'm for some reason quite sure that Korean food is not the big hit here. <laughs> So especially for TEDx Lugano, we've developed a hyperfood menu with a Swiss Mediterranean touch. And no Ryoshti, unfortunately, I'm afraid. <laughs> but instead we have muesli, which is a classical Swiss breakfast, and pasta with pesto, one of the staples of Italian gastronomy, also very popular in Ticino, all optimized for the cancer-beating potential and ingredients from our food map. The dishes shown here were prepared by my wife, who is also a member of our team and an amazing cook. And you see that European cuisine already has many simple, tasty, traditional recipes that you can easily prepare at home that are literally packed with hyperfoods that maybe just would require a little bit of tweaking to optimize their anti-cancer potential. What we also need to bear in mind is that food cooking involves chemical and physical processes that modify molecular content. If, for example, we fry our ingredients, many of these anti-cancer molecules are very likely to disappear. That's why, for instance, our hyper dishes involve processes that minimally affect all the good components. As a next step, 
we can represent food preparation as a computational graph, as it is used in computer science, where we have ingredients and cooking transformations that are applied to them, representing also the change in their molecular composition. In addition to cancer-beating molecules, food also contains molecules giving it taste, smell, and characteristic flavor. And many foods share multiple such components. You would be surprised to find out, for example, that tea and garlic, you would believe, have more than 100 flavor molecules in common, even though it's hard to think of anything that is less similar than tea and garlic, right? So the secret of food pairing is to combine ingredients that have similar, or maybe on the other hand, complementary molecular flavor profiles. And what was thought to be some black magic of top chefs can now be automated. We can employ network-based machine learning in order to solve this very complex optimization problem to strike the right balance between the health, taste, and maybe even aesthetics of the recipe, the recipe and the resulting dish. Yet, when it comes to tastes and recipes, probably the only common truth is the gustibus non est disputandum, as the Romans used to say, you don't argue about tastes. So recipe design must be highly personalized. It must account for personal taste preferences, but also for many other parameters, such as dietary restrictions, allergies, genetics, health and disease history, and also the gut microbiome. And all these can be done with network-based ML. And who knows, maybe in a few years from now, our computer-generated recipes will even challenge Michelin star chefs. We also envision a future where everyone will have a digital food passport storing this personal health and nutrition information. So next time you order food on online or dine out, you will have a meal that is customized and optimized right for you, for your health and taste profile. So I hope we convinced you that food is important, food is interesting, food is complex. And with Hyperfoods, we strive to harness novel machine learning, artificial intelligence, computing technologies to provide healthy, tasty, tailor-made, functional nutrition in order for all of us to live healthier, happier, and better lives. Thank you. Thank you so much.